it's very difficult to, to talk about methodologies in a sort of general way because I think as teachers we, we have the general understanding that there are certain important aspects that has to be that, that each student has to or each learner has to learn and engage with and, and um, find her way with. So that's, that would be the basic. For me, teaching painting, for instance, it would be very important to develop a sort of set of perceptual skills to be able to, to look in a certain way. Um, because we see the world all the time. But when we need to look carefully to see what a form looks like and how we might translate, I might translate this, I might, I might translate this chest of drawers or something onto a, onto a flat page. You have, there are some very fundamental principles you have to learn about this is an object in space that you're looking and now you're making an object in the space of the canvas or on the paper or whatever it might be. Um, so there's some basic disciplines, but I always have tried to do that in a way that and I'm talking about university at the moment, so because that's where I taught, uh, where the student would herself recognize what the methodology was, rather than me saying, this is the method and imposing it onto the practice. So for instance, I'll give you an example. This is the best way of doing it. In the second year, at, uh, in one of my classes at, uh, at WITS, I and there was a big class, about 30, 40 students. Um, and they were all now in their second year of study. So they basically knew the very basics of, of painting. And I gave them each exactly the same photocopy, black and white photocopy. Um, and they had to copy it. As I said, try and copy it as best as you can. Just exactly copy it. And so they all tried to do this. Um, on exactly the same size paper. And then afterwards, I put all the copies on the wall, and of course, they all looked completely different. And this was the way to say to them, okay, you're all very good copiers in that you're all trained to look very carefully. You can render, you can translate a three-dimensional form or a, another reference onto another piece of page, paper but you're all completely different. Even when you try, when I've asked you specially to be exactly the same. <laughs> and it was a fantastic installation. We put them, we made it into an installation. So we put the, all these absolutely the same, absolutely different works on a wall. And it was such a lesson. And they all learned themselves without me telling them that they were all individuals. And you know, that was one of the ways in which we, we brought very complex ideas around teaching through a very simple methodology of try to be the same and you will realize that you're absolutely different. That was one way of doing it. And the other way is what I do always um, is in first year when students first come from, from schools, often they have a very conventional view of what um, art is. And there's nothing wrong with that view, it's just not the only view. Um, and um, sometimes it's constricting. So I ask them just to mix up the paint. And it's not expensive paint that they're given. And they stand there mixing and doing whatever it is on their palette. And I ask them to do it, you know, use this color, use that color, use the other color. So it's a kind of limitation. And then we all stand back and we look at exactly, before they've even made the painting, we look at the palette. We look at how they've mixed their colors and what they've done with the materiality of, of, of the paint. Um, and I do believe that everybody has got a very, very, very distinctive and a very, very particular attitude to what you might call paint, but what we can really call materials. It could be clay, it could be, it could be anything, sand, the way you move things around, the way, and that is already, before you even make the painting, that's a sign of your particular 
creative disposition. And it's amazing. I mean, people don't think that. They always think that the medium is just a means to, to do something, but the medium, your relationship with your medium, is already absolutely fundamental to what you are as a creative being. And that's, I think, why children are very at ease with their mediums. You know, they splash things around, they mess. They, they're not anxious about it because they are at one with the materiality around them. Um, and you can put all sorts of psychological readings onto that, which I'm not necessarily interested in here. I'm interested in the fact that we are part of the material world that we, in, that we live in. We're not separate from it. And we can be creative in, in so many ways. And so children who make mud pies or who work, draw in, in the sand, that's being creative. And you can see that when you ask people to squeeze out paint on a palette and to start mixing before they even think about what they're going to paint or what the corresponding colors might be to what they need in the painting. Just to look at how they behave with material is very, very amazing. And it's thrilling to see that because you know that that material then will always be with them in one form or another, whether it's paint or whether it's how they decorate their rooms or whether that's whether it's like how they engage with a larger community around a much bigger creative project that might be say environmentalism like what we need to do as human beings um, in terms of the environmental crisis that we're in for instance to engage with with art processes um, at school and to think about how they speak to and give you a uh, a conduit to thinking about processes of, of social change, um, attitude change, for instance, the good one is the environment because that is absolutely clearly related to how we work with material and what we take from the world, um, the environment. Um, and I think that that's, yeah, that's just a, a really, really good, uh, a good way of, of people recognizing that the microcosm of their world can be extrapolated, taken out to the vast, you know, to the macrocosm, to the sort of larger space of the, of the world in which we all are responsible to, to, to treat well. Because arts education at school is young people, that's a perfect opportunity to really, really engage with with the questions which are not just about the statistics, but about real human values and, and values that we feel are crucial to ensuring a much, much better future than we seem to have at the moment.